Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Fish. And I'm Brandon Price. And this is Fish or Price Ranch. Ranch. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Sarah with Fisher Price Ranch. First off, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. So today's super windy outside, so uh, I figured I'd stay inside. Today we're going to organize. So what I want to do is we're only about a month and a half away, maybe a little bit less, on breeding season. And so it's time to get my whiteboards out. I need to... Um, there's a bunch of tape on them and I need to make them bigger because I have more goats to breed this year and I only had enough room for 19 this year we're doing 34 I think it is um, so I got I used goo gone freaking love that stuff I've never used it before and my whiteboard is super clean you can't really even tell that there was ever tape on there so this time instead of using tape I'm going to be using um, a sharpie this time it'll be a permanent marker. I know there's a chance it could rub off, but at least I could put that back on. I don't have to deal with sticky stuff or having to move everything again later on. So what I'm going to do is get my whiteboard ready. We're going to make all the grids on there and then we can start going over kind of we, Brandon and I have already gone over who we feel would be best to, to breed together. So we have that all written down. So now I can put it all on the whiteboard. And then we also have to do another whiteboard because we have our partnership with our other herd. And we've got about 34 goats there also that will be bred this year. Uh, or I think it's 32. Um, so anyway, I have to do all those as well. So we're going to go over it with our partner um, on who they want to breed together before we can put everything on the whiteboard. But I can get the whiteboard ready. So let's get started. All right, so here's my whiteboard. I've already actually started. I used a ruler and we did every half an inch and you can see all my marks here. So, and then I did the same on this side and I made sure that when I measured, we do the exact same thing on this side. If I turn it around completely and then did it, it could make them off. So I made sure that they're all marked the same way. Um, so we're gonna start there. And once we get all the lines across here going this way, then we'll be able to split it long ways down the middle on how many columns I need. So the problem that I had is, as you can see, I don't reach. And I don't have, I have a really long one that is actually too long for this whiteboard. So actually, we had purchased, uh, Brandon wanted a whiteboard for um, all the stuff he has to do. And actually, it fits pretty darn close. So we're just going to use the edge of this to make our line. All right, so I got that far. I have just, woo, don't, don't knock it, just from here to there that I still have left. But I was running out of space with that other whiteboard to make my line. So I'm letting this just sit in the sun. I want to make sure it's nice and dry. I've already accidentally hit it with the marker right there, and I tried to wipe it, and it smeared. So, I mean, it's not coming off. Um, so, I mean, all this first stuff is not coming off. It's not smearing. But before I rub another whiteboard across going this way, I want to make sure that this is nice and dry. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and get all the edges. That way they go all the way up to the wood. Alright, so there's all my first lines. So when I did this, there was actually, it wasn't quite exactly the same size on top and bottom. So as you can see, this is just a little bit bigger than this one. But at the top here, it was quite a big difference but not enough space to do another line. So what I'll do is I'll make this my title side for all of my um, columns. So this will be the top of the board and then we'll work down. All right, so I just finished all my columns. I'm like so excited. I haven't even counted how many lines I have here, but I can do a lot of goats now on just this small whiteboard. So we're gonna be in this fifth wheel for a while. Um, so I can't have my wall size whiteboard for probably a couple of years. So this is really exciting. I'm going to write in the tops. We're going to do the doe, the buck, when they're bred, when they're due, when they actually kid. How many kids? Are they bucks or does? And then what class, which is like commercial, percentage, purebred, New Zealand. Um, so I'm going to write all those in and then we can start writing in our girls. So now what we did was we purchased these dry erase markers and they are fine tip. So I can write a lot smaller, but still be able to read much clearer. All 
all done with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys um, what our breeding schedule looks like here. So what we did was we wrote down each of our boys are in blue and then what class they are. So we try and keep mostly New Zealand boys. We've got three there, four, five, and then we have Hawthorne's our only purebred buck. So then what we've done is we've gone through and decided who we feel like would work best uh, to breed with each buck. So this year it looks like Bazooka is going to get five. Our new buck paladin is going to get four and then he's these ones in red are the ones that just kitted so they'll get bred later and also kid in the spring whereas these ones are going to be kidding in December so the red ones are for spring kidding the purple ones are for December kidding not that I'm organized <laughs> um, I have not told you guys about this yet but we are getting a new buck and he is a very well-known buck top breeder um, from the last couple farms he's been at uh, we are lucky enough we are getting him and we're picking him up in about eight days so we're super excited well we'll be heading to Tennessee to pick him up um, but we're super excited we'll be adding him to our breeding program so he's automatically gonna get four and then he'll get three in the spring and then galaxy's our new buck he's that speckled buck that we have um, so he's going to get a few. He'll get five um, in December, one in the spring. And then Sorrel, he's one that we retained. He is out of Pinky and Charlie. And Charlie's the one that we had sold. And um, so anyway, the reason we decided to keep him is because he's out of our best milking New Zealand doe. And so he's going to help add in dairy from the buck side to his daughters. So we're putting him with some... Uh, these percentage ones here are out of our dairy lines that we're doing a breed up program with. And then Zinnia, she's uh, from Good Milking Lines. I think Willow's mom had a pretty good udder. And then Evie, of course, is our best purebred milker. So definitely going to add him to her and see if that helps with any daughters giving more milk. And then Hawthorne, he's going to get four. So on my whiteboard, I know I normally do it twice. So normally what I'll do is I'll just write in all the does in no specific order. I'll probably go in the order of these. I'll just start up here and work my way down. Um, and we'll write them all in. The nice thing about this many spots is I can do all the December kittings will be up here. And then I can leave a space. And then all my spring kittings can be at the bottom. Um, I'm excited. I need to count how many there are here. But anyway, we'll write in the does. We'll write in who they're going to be bred with. And then once breeding season comes around, we'll write in the, the, the date that they're bred, the date that they're due. And then normally, um, I get antsy within those five months, and I'll erase everything. <laughs> and then I'll write them in the order that they're actually due. So that's typically what I do. Because I'll get antsy in the wintertime, and I get bored, and then I'll just come in and I'll erase it and reorganize it so they're in order as they kid. Even though they don't always go in order, 90% um, of the time they will. All right, so I've counted how many spaces. I have 65 spaces. So if we get to 65 breeding does, I will have the space. <laughs> but we've got all of our ones that are going to be bred this year. So we've got from May Gypsy all the way down to Primrose will be for December kidding. We'll be breeding them in July. And then we just have the eight that we'll be breeding in October for March babies. So I've got all them written down. That's a good start. Uh, so once we start breeding, I'll start filling more of these in. All right, so my whiteboard is all finished. We've got everything organized for breeding season. I'm super excited for that. I cannot wait to get our new buck and show you guys. It's going to be really exciting. Um, so I'll show you real quick. One more thing that I do uh, for organization is on my calendar. So here's my calendar. This is actually for May. And uh, today is actually the 11th. Tomorrow, I can't believe it, the quads that we had born are already going to be 30 days old. Uh, time sure has flown. So we keep track of all the, all the weights, the days. Um, we've got some coming up on 150-day weights. Uh, I just put the does name because if we have multiple kids, it's better than writing all the kids out. So we've got 150-day weights coming starting on the 20th. Um, 
all sorts of stuff going on. So we keep track of all of our dates. And then uh, June, we have our one-year waits coming up from when Bruce was born. And coming up already on a year since we've owned our property. I can't believe that. Time sure is going quick. Um, and then we've got 60-day waits coming up on those. And then we come into July and the reason that we breed at a certain time is because if we want to enter a buck um, into the Oklahoma buck test, which we tried to enter last year, we didn't get in. They filled up too fast. This year we're, we were going to do it, but the pickup day is actually the day we're getting married. And so I didn't want to do it this year. So um, they we typically breed after the 15th. We'll probably start around the 18th just to give a few days in case anybody goes early. But we'll be starting there. The The goats typically have to be born after December 15th. Um, so if they're born on the 14th, they're too old to enter. So we want to make sure that they're born at least after December 15th. So that's kind of why we do that. So anyway, that's kind of the look of our calendar. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully, maybe it was a little bit helpful. Uh, we like to keep everything organized and we write everything down as soon as we see it happen, especially during breeding season. I like to know when my kids are due, no matter how many we have due. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier when they do start kidding. We're not wondering when they're due. Um, so I'm out there a couple times a day during breeding season and I just, at a glance, check everybody, see if anybody's actually breeding in front of me. Um, or if they look like they have bred, I'll write down those dates. I write them on the calendar also. That way in three weeks we can see if they return to heat or if they're actually pregnant. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.